What up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Downtown. I'm Ray Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Wednesday, May 16th, 2018, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the Enter Report or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com. Or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Brian Malik sings as Freddie Mercury on stage in the first trailer for the upcoming Queen biopic Bohemian Rhapsody. The clip released Tuesday chronicles Mercury's rock star life and features Queen recording songs together in the studio before taking the stage in front of a massive crowd. Anthony McCartan wrote the script for Bohemian Rhapsody and Queen's members Brian May and Roger Taylor serve as music producers. The cast includes Alan Leach as Mercury's personal manager, Paul Prenter, Ben Hardy as Taylor, Willem and Lee as May, and John Mazzello as John D.K. Deacon, the bassist and composer who hails Queen's financial de- uh, dealings. The synopsis reads, Bohemian Rhapsody is a foot-stomping celebration of Queen, their music, and their extraordinary lead singer, Freddie Mercury, who defied stereotypes and shattered conventions to become one of the most beloved entertainers on the planet. The film traces the meteoric rise of the band through their iconic songs and revolutionary sound, their near implosion as Mercury's lifestyle spirals out of control, and the triumphant reunion on the eve of Live Aid, where Mercury, facing a life-threatening illness, leads the band in one of the greatest performances in the history of rock music. In the process, cementing the legacy of a band that were always more like a family and continues to inspire in- outsiders, dreamers, and music lovers to this day. Filmmaker Dexter Fletcher was hired as the new director of Bohemian Rhapsody to replace original director Brian Singer after he failed to show up to, to set on multiple occasions. Singer disputed the claims and said Fox did not give him enough time to deal with an illness in the family and his own health. Bohemian Rhapsody is set to arrive on November 2nd. John David Washington goes after the Ku Klux Klan with the help from Adam Driver in the new trailer for director Spike Lee's upcoming Black KKK Klansman. The clip released Monday followed the film's premiere at the Cannes Film Festival follows the true story of Ron Stallworth, played by Washington, as he becomes the first African-American detective to serve at the Colorado Springs Police Department in the early 1970s. Stallworth wishes to drive the KKK out of his town and enlists Flip Zimmerman, played by Driver, to help him infiltrate the hate group after placing a phone call to their leader, David Duke, portrayed by Topher Grace. Uh, Zerman tells Stallworth, who replies, for you, it's a crusade. For me, it's a job. You're Jewish. They hate you. Doesn't that piss you off? Why are you acting like you ain't got skin in the game? Black KKK Klansman is based on Stallworth's 2014 book about his experience infiltrating the KKK tile Black Klansman. Lee, who also penned the scre- screenplay, is, produced al- is producing alongside Jordan Peele, Jason Bloom, Sean McCrittrick, Raymond Mansfield, and Sean Reddick. Black KKK Klansman is set to arrive in theaters on August 10th. Kyle's jury member Kristen Stewart went barefoot on the red carpet Monday. A 28-year-old American actress kicked off her heels while attending the Cannes International Film Festival screening of Spike Lee's movie Black KK Klansman. Stewart, who wore a silver Chanel mini dress and black Christian Lloyd de Tour uh, pumps, posted for photos before taking off her shoes at the bottom of the red carpet staircase. He then ascended to the stairs barefoot. Stewart didn't explain the act, although she had previously criticized Cannes' black tied dress code. The policy has traditionally been interpreted as women wearing a dress and heels. So I told a Hollywood reporter at the festival in 2017, people get very upset if you don't wear heels. But I feel that you can't ask people that anymore. It's just a given. If you're not asking guys to wear heels in a dress, you cannot ask me either. She added, even four years ago, it was not even a question. You have to wear a dress. Cannes Festival Director Theory Fremont uh, had clarified the dress code policy in May 2015 following Shootgate, an incident where security turned away a female attendee for wearing flats on the red carpet. Primo said, according to Variety, nobody is obligated to wear heels on the red carpet. One of our agents screwed up, and we apologize right away. 
Audible John Travolta and Kelly Preston say that their movie Gotti reflects their own love of family. The 64-year-old actor and 55-year-old actress who play mobster couple John Gotti and Victoria Gotti in the new film discuss in an interview with Variety how they connected to Gotti by drawing parallels to their own marriage. Preston said of playing Gotti's wife Victoria, you want to bring the longevity, the closeness, the familiarity, and that comfort that you just know each other so well. They love their family. They both love their kids. They're all time Preston married in September 1991 and have two children, Ella and Benjamin. Gotti centers on Guy's role as the boss of the Gambino crime family, although Travolta says the role proves dynamic. The actor says Gotti was a composite that was very intriguing. He had a lot of style, but he was down to earth. He was thoughtful, considerate, but tough as nails and would do what he had to do. Travolta and Preston were all smiles while attending the Cannes International Film Festival photo call for Gotti on Tuesday. The couple had previously co-starred in The Experts from Paris with Love and other films. Travolta said his marriage in an interview uh, with Close Weekly in November, we really care deeply about each other and we protect each other. Preston advised, keep checking in and growing and changing. Keep doing new things, just the two of you. ABC Entertainment President Channing Dungey says he doesn't expect the next season of Roseanne to focus on politics. When the show returns this spring after a 21-year absence, the titular matriarch played by Roseanne introduces a supporter of U.S. President Donald Trump, while her sister Jackie, played by Laurie Metcalf, was still upset that Hillary Clinton or Jill Stein didn't win the election. Asked in a teleconference with reporters Tuesday if she thinks more time will be devoted to the siblings' political differences in the future, Dungey replied, we certainly did touch on some of that in the first episode. She added, in a very funny way, I think it allowed us, between the different political views of Roseanne and Jackie, to address some issues that we think have been conversations at other family dining tables across the country. She also added, that said, having touched on that in the first episode of the season, I think when you look at the subsequent episodes of the run, the focus is not really on politics, it's much more on family and the everyday trials and tribulations that this family faces and still brings them together. Uh, Dungey says about the sitcom's 12th season, I think that they're going to continue on the path that they are on towards the latter part of the season, which is away from politics and more focus on family. The network executive said ABC tried to tell as many different stories as possible, and Roseanne fits that mandate because it shows a struggling Midwestern family facing different challenges than the wealthier characters in some of its sitcoms like Blackish and Modern Family. Dungy says we look to be diverse and inclusive from a racial per- perspective, from a gender perspective, from a religious perspective, and also from an economic perspective. She defended the decision to cancel the, in 2017 Tim Allen's highly rated Last Man Standing, a sitcom that had in some ways been compared to Roseanne in that it features characters with conver- uh, conservative viewpoints. Fox announced last week it would revive Last Man Standing for a seventh season. Uh, she added, the decision we made last year in terms of canceling Last Man Standing were made with the best information we had at the time. We had had a couple of years running when we had to come down to the wire in terms of being able to make a deal with our studio partners, and unfortunately, that year, we were not able to come to terms and bring the show back. But I wish them every success in the return of that show on Fox. ABC Entertainment President Channing Dungey also said that the Alec Baldwin show will begin taping in June for a September premiere. The talk show featuring the Saturday Night Live and 30 Rock alum will air Sundays at 10 p.m. It will alter in-depth features on well-known figures with Baldwin's take on current events. Dungey said in a teleconference a call with reporters on Tuesday. I think if you listen to any of his podcasts, what it's great about what Alec does is he'll talk with people about the span of their career, like Robert De Niro. And so an episode like that is evergreen. He certainly is going to have episodes that may be more timely and topical, depending on who the guest is. Dungy says that the show's team is still working out whether it will be taped in front of a live audience. Baldwin said, when the project was first announced in March, I'm excited about this show and grateful to ABC for taking a chance on me in what is adamantly a crowded field. I've enjoyed doing my podcast for WNYC and looking forward to the challenge of doing a show on camera. A triple Emmy winner hosted an after's Oscar program for the network, which served as a pilot for the show. ABC released the first trailer for A Whiskey Cavalier, its new action drama starring The Walking Dead actress Lauren Cullen and Scandal alum Scott Foley. The title refers to the code name of Foley's FBI agent Will Chase. 
The synopsis reads, accompanying the clip on YouTube, following an emotional breakup, Chase is assigned to work as a badass, with a badass CIA operative, Francesca Frankie Towerbridge, codenamed Fiery Tribune, played by Lauren Cohn. Together, they lead an interagency team of flawed, funny, and heroic spies who periodically save the world and each other while navigating the rocky roads of friendship, romance, and office politics. Tuesday's three-minute preview shows Chase and Tar- Troll Bridge meeting for the first time in a bar, immediately becoming rivals as they work with the same case. Anna Ortiz, Tyler James Williams, and Verdaz co-star in the show. Jennifer Love Hewitt is set to join Fox's drama 911 as a series regular, starring with the show's upcoming second season. Hewitt will be portraying Maddie, the sister of firefighter Evan Buck Buckley, played by Oliver Stark, who becomes a 911 operator, Variety reported. This marks Hewitt's first regular series role after appearing on CBS's Criminal Minds, season 11 in 2016. The actress is known for starring in television shows such as Party of Five, its spinoff Time of Your Life, The Client List, and The Ghost Whisperer. Connie Britton, a series regular on the show as a 911 operator, had a one-year deer on the show and is yet to, to be determined if she will be returning, the high reporter noted. 911 from co-creators Ryan Murphy, Brad Falchuk, and Tim Meaner also stars Angela Bassett, Peter Krauss, Stark, Aisha Hines, Kenneth Chow, and Rockman Dunbar. The series follows the experiences of police officers, firefighters, and emergency operators. Dave Letterman is is joining host Seth Meyers for on Late Night as a special guest on May 23rd. Late Night executive producer Mike Shoemaker announced Letterman's upcoming appearance on Twitter Tuesday. Uh, he said, it's Dave's show and we are just borrowing it. Dave Letterman will be our guest on Late Night with at Seth Meyers on Wednesday, May 23rd. Letterman hosted NBC's Late Night starting in 1982 for 11 seasons until he exited in 1993 after not becoming the host of The Tonight Show following the retirement of Johnny Carson. The comedian then moved to CBS to host Late Show until May 2015 when he handed the program over to Stephen Colbert. Letterman is currently the host of a Netflix interview series titled My Guest Needs No Introduction. The program has featured guests such as George Clooney, former President Barack Obama, Jay-Z, and Tina Fey. Pretty Little Liars, The Perfectionist, has landed a series order. Preform confirmed in a press release Tuesday that has picked up the Pretty Little Liars spinoff for a 10-episode first season. Preform announced the news at its upfront presentation Monday in New York. The network posted a first-look video on the Pretty Little Liars official Twitter account the same day. The network wrote, from Rosewood to Beacon Heights, life is anything but perfect. Here's your first look at our spinoff, hashtag Pretty Little Liars, The Perfectionist, coming to hashtag Preform TV in 2019. The Professional stars Pretty Little Liars series regulars Sasha Patrice and Janelle Parrish, who will reprise their roles of Alison De Laurentiis and Mona Vanderwall, respectfully. The show will also feature Sophia Carson and Sydney Park. Patrice wrote on Instagram, so excited for you guys to see hashtag PLL The Professionals. We put a lot of love into this, and I think you're going to adore it. I love you all, hashtag PLL fans tremendously, and I know at Janelle Parrish and I will make you proud. Pretty Little Liars ended in June 2017 after a seven-season run. A first spinoff, Ravenswood, was canceled in 2014 after a season. DC comic series Doom Patrol about a group of eccentric and unlikely heroes is being adapted into a live action television series that will premiere on DC Universe, the company's upcoming streaming service. Warner Bros. Digital Networks and DC Entertainment has given a 13 episode direct to series order for Doom Patrol, which will feature hour long episodes. Doom Patrol is being written by Jeremy Carvo, who wrote Supernatural, uh, with famed comic book writer Jeff Johns, DC television veteran uh, George Berlanti, and Sarah Schatzter of Berlanti Productions Executive Producing. Berlanti is already the producer behind the CW's slate of superhero dramas, including Arrow, Flash, Supergirl, Black Lightning, and Legends of Tomorrow, along with fellow DC Universe live action series Titans, which follows the Teen Titans. Doom Patrol will spin out the events of Titans and feature superheroes Robot Man, Negative Man, Elastic Girl, and Crazy Jane, who each suffer from horrible accents that give them powers. The team is brought together by mad scientist Dr. Niles Calder, also known as the Sheev, who sends the team out to investigate weird phenomena and to defend Earth. DC released the logo of the series on Twitter Monday. Uh, the post reads, What happens when a band of superpower freaks come together to fight for a world that wants nothing to do with them? 
The show is the latest announcement uh, for the DC Universe streaming service, in, uh, which was announced in April 2017. DC shows being developed for the service includes a third season of the animated series Young Justice, a Harley Quinn animated series featuring the actress who brought the character to life on the big screen, Margot Robbie, a live-action Swamp Thing series, and a live-action Superman prequel series titled Metropolis. Kendra Wilkinson is looking for dating and sex advice in the wake of her split. The 32-year-old television personality reached out to fans Monday on Twitter after filing for divorce from her husband, former NFL player Hank Bassett, after eight years of marriage. Wilkinson asked her 2.6 million followers, What's your opinion? Do I start dating sex now or give myself more time? She added, My heart is broken, but I have needs. Uh, laughing out loud, hashtag give me loving, hashtag not getting younger, hashtag 33, here I come. Fans encourage Wilkinson to meet new people, although the stars seem unsure where to start, asking, okay, where do I find some? Uh, laughing my ass off. She thanked her fans and followers for their input before heading out to spend time with her kids. The television personality tweeted, I can't, you guys make me laugh today, thank you for that. Time to fly kites with my babies. Wilkinson is parent to eight-year-old Hanks Jr. and three-year-old daughter Elijah Wood Baxter. She said in an Instagram post last week she focused on her well-being after filing for divorce from Bassett in April. Uh, the star says, being, uh, being trying to take care of myself lately, my mental, emotional, physical well-being, kids come first all the time, but mama needs some fun right then and there. Jennifer Lopez says she got a lot of flack about her curvy figure during her early career. The 48-year-old singer and actress recalled in an interview with InStyle published Monday how she rejected pressure from the entertainment industry to lose weight. Lopez says, I got a lot of flack from it from people in the industry. They'd say you should lose a few pounds or you should do this or do that. If I only got to a point that I was like, this is who I am, I'm shaped like this. She explained, everybody I grew up with looked like that, and they were all beautiful to me. I didn't see anything wrong with it. I still don't. The booty singer said her mom and grandma always encouraged her to embrace her body. She says being curvy and not being six feet tall was never a bad thing. It was actually something that was celebrated. And so later on, when I brought that in front of the world, I wasn't really trying to send a message. I was just being myself. Lopez credit her mom, Guadalupe Reyes, with sharing who she is in an Instagram post Sunday on Mother's Day. The star wrote, Happy Mother's Day to my beautiful mommy. You light up every room you are in with your energy and joy. You make me laugh in a way that no one else can. I'm so grateful you are my mother. She added, You're so much part of all I am. You made me believe I could do anything, and I wouldn't be the woman I am today of it weren't for you. I love you with all my heart. Will Smith is going public with her history of self-harm. The 17-year-old singer shocked mom Jada Pickett Smith in an interview Monday by recalling how she started cutting herself following the release of her single Whip My Hair. She said on Jada's Facebook show, Red Table Talk, I would have to say I honestly feel like I lost my sanity at one point. It was after that whole Whip My Hair thing, and I had just stopped doing singing lessons, and I was kind of just in this gray area of who am I, do I have a purpose? Willow was just nine years old when Whip My Hair debuted in October 2010. The song became a hit, reaching number 11 in the second week on the Billboard, tour, uh, the Billboard singles charts. Willow recounted, after the tour and the promotion and after all that, they wanted me to finish my album, and I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. She says, after all of that kind of settled down, it was just kind of a lull. I was listening to a lot of dark music, and it was just so crazy. I was just plunged into this black hole, and I was like, cutting myself and doing crazy things. Willow explained she harmed herself because she, of her physical circumstances weren't reflecting her emotional pain. She said of her scars, there's still a little something there. Today, lost, uh, totally lost my sanity for a moment there. I never talked about it because it was such a short, weird period in, and point in my life, but you have to pull yourself out of it. Uh, Jada is parent to Will Willow and 19-year-old son Jaden with husband actor Will Smith. She said on last week's episode of Red Table Talk that she regrets dating Will while he was still legally married to his first wife. 
Gwyneth Paltrow shared a rare photo of lookalike daughter Apple on her 14th birthday. The 45-year-old actress dedicated a sweet post to Apple, her elder child, with ex-husband Chris Martin on the teenager's birthday Monday. The photo gives a close-up glimpse of Apple's face as she shows a slight smile for the camera. Paltrow couldn't help but gush about her daughter in the caption. The star wrote, Happy birthday, my darling girl. You make every day feel like a Christmas morning. Uh, she also added, you are the most vibrant, hilarious, twirling all over the place, beautiful inside-out young woman. You're an amazing thinker and an incredible songwriter. Thanks for still hanging out with me, even though you are 14. Paltrow is also parent to 12-year-old son Moses with Martin. He said in an interview with Today in June 2017 that Apple's teenage years have been pretty smooth so far, although her daughter sometimes exhibits typical teen behavior. The actress says, I have to say, so far, Apple... She's pretty great. Uh, she also added, she's like, can you close my door? And I'm like, wait, with me on the other side? But other than that, it's pretty smooth so far. Paltrow and Martin, Martin split in 2014 after 10 years of marriage. Paltrow announced her engagement to producer Brad Falchuk in January and said on Good Morning America this month that she's en enjoying wedding planning. Fashion design reality series Project Runway is returning to its original network, Bravo, for season 17 after appearing on Lifetime since 2008. Bravo Network star Andy Cohen made the announcement Monday at the NBC Universal Upfront event in New York City and on Twitter. He says Project Runway is coming back where it all started. It's coming home on Bravo. Project Runway is moving to back to Bravo through an agreement by Bravo Media and Lantern Entertainment, who bid... Uh, to acquire assets to the Weinstein Company was approved in Delaware bankrupt, uh, Bankruptcy Court on May 8th. The Weinstein Company, which helped produce Project Runaway, filed for bank bankruptcy in February after it failed to negotiate a sale for, for the film studio, which was founded by disgraced Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein and his, bro and his brother Bob. Project Runaway, featuring host Heidi Klum and mentor Tim Gunn, moved to Lifetime in 2008 after airing for five seasons on Bravo. Lifetime parent company a &E Television Networks terminated its contract for Project Runaway in January after Harvey was hit with a sexual harassment allegations. Um, President of Lifestyles Networks, NBC Universal Cable Entertainment, Francis Berwick, said in a statement, We are beyond excited to reboot Project Runaway at the network where it all began. Leaning into the creative process in an entertaining way has always been part of Bravo's DNA, and Project Runaway perfectly captures that. This franchise will be an important cornerstone to complete Bravo's original premium scripted and unscripted slate, and we expect it to drive the same level of fandom and passion as we experienced last time it was on Bravo. Project Runaway Season 16 wrapped up in November with Japanese designer Kentaro Kamiyama coming in in first place, taking home $100,000 to start his own fashion line. Tom Wolfe, the author of The Right Stuff and Bonfires of the Vanities, died Monday in a Manhattan hospital at the age of 88. Wolfe, who lived in New York since 1962, had been hospitalized with an infection, his agent Lynn Nesbitt told the New York Times. Wolfe began his writing career as a newspaper a newspaper reporter, first for the Washington Post and then for the New York Herald Tribune. The nonfiction author and novelist who wrote a number of bestsellers over a career that spanned decades was among the writers credited with creating the new journalism, an American literary movement in the 1960s and 1970s that pushed the limits of traditional journalism and nonfiction writing. From his 1968 nonfiction work, The Electric Kool-Aid Asset Test, which examined the lifestyle of LSD advocate Ken Kesey and his counterculture co uh, compatriots, to his 1979 book, The Right Stuff, that focused on the first American astronauts and the Mercury Space Program, Wolf's nonfiction books plunge readers into real-life situations that often read like novels. The Right Stuff was adapted into a film in 1983. In 1987, Wolf published The Bonfires of the Vanities, a novel that also later became a film. In 2016, Wolf published his last book, The Kingdom of Speech, which sought to challenge society's understanding of Darwinism. Wolf, known for his signature white suit, was easily recognized when taking walks in his neighborhood. The icon told CBS News in 2016 he had five more books planned. Wolf said, to be honest, I only have five more planned, and one coming up is on political correctness, which I think is the funniest subject in a long, in a long, long time. Wolf was 88. 
And now let's take a look at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 2014, pioneering TV journalist Barbara Walters signs off. Broadcast journalist and TV personality Barbara Walters retires from ABC News and as the co-host of the daytime program The View. In a landmark career that spanned over some 50 years on air, the 84-year-old Waters blazed a trail for women in TV news. On Walters' May 16th View send-off, Oprah Winfrey, Diane Sawyer, and Katie Couric were among the more than two dozen female broadcasters who appeared on the on the show to pay tribute to the legendary newswoman. Born in Boston on September 25th, 1929, Walters, whose father was a nightclub owner, grew up in Massachusetts, New York City, and Miami. Graduate of Sarah Lawrence College, Walters worked as a TV writer and producer in New York before joining NBC's The Today Show in 1961 as a writer and eventually on-air reporter. In 1974, she was named the official co-host of the program, the first woman to hold the job. Two years later, Walters became the first woman to co-anchor a nightly new network newscast, earning a record $1 million a year. However, after experiencing tensions with her ABC Evening News co-host, Harry Reisner, and low ratings, Walters left the program in 1978. From 1984 to 2004, she was the co-host and producer of the TV news magazine 2020. Additionally, in 1997, she created The View, co-hosting the program from its inception until her retirement. Best known for her interviews over the decades, Walter went one-on-one with American presidents. She even interrogated every commander-in-chief from Richard Nixon to Barack Obama, world leaders, movie stars, convicted killers, and scores of other newsmakers. In 1977, she convinced Egyptian President Anwar Sadat and Israeli Prime Minister Menachem Begum to submit to their first joint interview. And that same year, she traveled to Cuba to headline uh, to, for a headline-making sit-down with dictator Fidel Castro. In 2001, she interviewed President Vladimir Putin of Russia and asked whether she, he had ever ordered anyone killed. He said, Nyet. She also conducted interviews with such notorious figures as Iraq's Saddam Hussein, Libya's Muammar Gaddafi, and Syria's Bashar al-Assad. In 1999, Monica Lewinsky, whose affair with Bill Clinton led to his impeachment, gave her first TV interview to Walters. A record-breaking 74 million viewers tuned in, making it the highest-rated news program ever broadcast by a single network. Walters, whose interview almost Every major Hollywood celebrity also earned a reputation for skillfully asking probing questions that made a number of her famous subjects tear up. However, one question Walters had a tough time living down occurred during a 1981 on-air conversation with Katherine Hepburn. After the actress compared herself to a tree, Walters said, what kind, of tree are, what kind of tree are you if you think you're a tree? On May 13th, 2013, Walters announced that after more than a half a century in TV, she would retire the following year. Shortly before the acclaimed journalist made her official farewell on The View in May 2014, her longtime employer ABC honored her by naming its new headquarters in New York City the Barbara Walters Building. And that is your entertainment report for Wednesday, May 16, 2018. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the enter report or on Instagram at the entertainment report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.